We'll look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins. Just keep that in mind, once. You see, the Old Testament sacrifices were there and they were done very continually. A lot of Old Testament sacrifices took place and there was a lot of bloodshed. There was a lot of animals that were killed. They were slain and their blood was shed as a picture and a pointing toward the once for all sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. And now here we see it. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Now we have to realize that we're unjust in the sight of the Lord. We are not the way God wants us to be. Right? When we're born in this world, we're born as sinners. And because of that, we're heading down to hell, and God does not want that for us. And that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be our Savior. But we've got to believe on him. We've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we'll never be in heaven. And God is able to forgive you of all of your sins, my friend. And that's why I'm here this morning. So that on your way to work, you can trust Christ. You can come to faith in Christ. So that you won't waste another day, my friend, because time is running out. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. We're unjust. He's the just one. That he might bring us to God. You see, it's the only way that we can be brought back to God. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ. It says here, being put to death in the flesh, in other words, being put to death in the body, but quickened by the Spirit. That means made alive by the Spirit. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected by his own power, also by the power of his Father and the power of the Holy Spirit. The whole trinity or triunity was at work in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. But we know that he also had to uh, die before he could be raised from the dead. And his death is the once for all sacrificial death to end all sacrifices, as it were, and so that to bring us back unto God you and I who have gone far away from God in our sin. You and I have been separated from God because of our sin. And we need forgiveness for those sins. And the only way is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ is all sufficient for all who will call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. The Word of God says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. You know, there's no difference in nationality, skin colour, anything like that. Where we're born or what family we're born into, whatever it is, there's no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says here, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water or through water. And so these eight souls were safe inside the ark. Now God had instructed Noah to build an ark. It was a, a big three-story high a boat, if you like, or ship, and it was, it was going to house the animals. And Noah and his wife and uh, I think it was their three sons and their wives. I think that's right. There were, basically, there was eight people out of a whole wide world that were saved. And they were saved through that, uh, the flood waters. You see, everyone else was, and every animal, was uh, drowned in the water. And so we need to understand there is judgment coming. And Noah was warning the people. He was a preacher of righteousness. He was warning the people that, hey, there's judgment coming. You've got to get inside the ark. 
But they thought he was mad. They thought he was crazy. And so they didn't believe him. He said, look, there's water coming. There's going to be rain coming. There's going to be a worldwide flood. Get inside this ark and you'll be safe. And we as gospel preachers say that too. We say, don't get inside a physical ark like that, but get inside the Lord Jesus Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All old things are passed away. Because, behold, all things have become new. Have you been sheltered under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you put your faith in him? Is, is the blood all sufficient for you? You know it is to God. God is fully satisfied with the sacrifice of his beloved son upon the cross of Calvary. Why aren't you satisfied with that? And have you believed on him? Have you made it your own? Have you uh, closed in with God's offer of eternal salvation through the once-for-all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross? So we see here that uh, eight souls were saved. Only eight souls. You know, there must have been thousands, if not millions of people upon the earth at that particular time. So we need to understand there is a very small percentage, probably, going to be saved, going to be in heaven. You know, someone came to the Lord Jesus and said, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he didn't really say yes or no, but the inference is, yes, there will be few saved. Because many people will not come to the Lord Jesus Christ for their eternal salvation. You see, we, generally speaking, are a proud sort of a people. We think we're good enough. We think, well, we're not as bad as the next bloke down the street. And that might be so. But the point is this, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. We've all fallen short of God's divine perfection, standard of perfection. You see, God's standard is perfect, is perfection. And it's only found, fulfilled, in the person of Jesus Christ. He's the one who fulfilled the law absolutely to the letter. There wasn't one jot or tittle that was left undone. The Lord Jesus Christ did it all. And that's why you and I don't have to keep the law to get to heaven. We must understand that. There is no good works that will ever get us to heaven. We've got to come and put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be in heaven. And that's the only way anyone is going to be there. If we'll come to Christ, if we'll come in repentance toward God, that is a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. Remember, once for all, he offered one sacrifice for sins forever, and he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth now uh, doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, some of these words are actually in brackets, so it should read really like this. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we need to understand the Lord Jesus said to his disciples, and because I live, ye shall live also. And so if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll pass from death unto life. You say, well, I'm already alive, what's the problem? Yeah, physically you are, but spiritually you are dead if you're not Christ's. In other words, if you haven't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are spiritually dead as far as God is concerned. He might wants to make you alive in Christ. He wants to give you the new birth. We need to be saved. We need to be born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Speaking of the Lord Jesus, says here, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Yes, the work is complete. 
of our eternal redemption, eternal salvation, through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. I wonder, have you taken advantage of this sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ? You need to do that, otherwise you'll be lost. You'll remain in a lost condition, heading down to hell because your sins have not been forgiven. I hope you've understood the message. We're sinners in the sight of the Lord. We cannot save ourselves by any way, shape, or form. Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures. He's a living, loving Saviour. He desires to save your soul this morning. What will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Is he your Saviour? Or will he have to be your judge, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. It's either heaven or hell, what will it be for you? It's all determined by what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening and have a great day.